All right, everybody, I want to talk to you today about why you've been measuring suction superheat wrong when we went from VRV4 to VRVX and how every set of data I want you to go back and question life because it's probably wrong, right? You have two units here, one on the left, one on the right. And if you're looking up above reading the tabs, you're cheating. Um, so there's that. But these units look identical. Right, the one on the right looks just like the one on the left. It's just a really crappier photo of low resolution. Whoever uploaded that to Dyke and City clearly doesn't know how to use PDFs. These units look exactly identical to each other because they kind of are. We went from VRV4 to VRVX in a very short manner of time, but also we made a few changes to the cabinet sizes. Remember VRV4, we have the, the 72, right? Which is a single teeny tiny module. And went to VRVX, it was a one size, one shoe fits all kind of thing. And everything looks like the units you see here on my screen. Now, if you look at it from the outside, you can't tell the difference between the two. And I would you know, be remiss if I didn't know better and no one told me this and I didn't watch this video, I wouldn't understand that they are actually completely different. Not just in a lot of ways, but also the way we measure suction superheat, one of the three pillars, you're probably doing it wrong if you haven't actually looked at the differences of these units. Now, these are one of these things where we don't really document very well, and the manufacturer is not any better, about the differences when we change series of equipment, right? We try to, they try to do their best with the classes. Um, I think I taught at a Myriad class at one point at the NASC, a National Service Conference that they had. But again, Unless you go in the service manual and look for every nut and bolt that's different, you're not going to know what really has changed unless you actually dive into it or you watch this video and someone tells you. So again, you know the left, you know the right. They look identical. These are actually two different series of equipment. The one on the left here is actually a VRVX series, right? And people will argue with me and they say it's VRV4X, and I guess it is. Uh, the one on the right is actually a VRV4 series. Now, the difference here in the model number names is the X in VRVX and the T in VRV4. That's the letter in them. Let me just get rid of these photos here really quick and show you the units side by side. Now, here's those numbers, right? REYQ144T, the T stands for VRV4. REYQ144X, the X stands for VRVX, right? VRV4X, if you will. I get rid of the four because it just gets too confusing. You'll notice same cabinet size. Now, the big difference is here that I'm going to point out before we dive into why you've been doing things wrong your entire life and you should just quit your job is here's this big old vapor injected compressor. We've got one in VRVX. In VRV4, we have two. Now, that's the biggest change out of the two series. But they snuck something in there, and you probably didn't realize it, and it's probably been messing with your head this entire time. So let's let's just jump right into that part of it. Move myself here and just jump over to the part of the manual that I actually want to go to. That is page 62. I oh, can't type, apparently. And over here, that is page 15. 15. There we go. Okay. So. Again, I put these labels at the bottom just to drive the point home here. So when we look at these two pieces of equipment. We know what suction superheat is, right? You've watched the videos. You've, you've taken the lessons. You, you understand the classes. You understand basic refrigeration theory. And that suction superheat is something we have to measure to ensure that we have the right vapor quality getting back to our compressor at all times. It doesn't matter the mode. It doesn't matter the demand. It deserves quality, compressor, quality vapor back to the actual compressor. Now look at these sensors. Left is VRVX, right is VRV4. Now you notice that, sure, okay, they give them different numbers. 31, line item 31, R4, uh, 10, R10T, right, thermistor R10T is suction pipe thermistor. Says the same thing. Over here, number 35, R10T, same thing, okay? Identical, got it, okay. Both suction pipe thermistors, designation hasn't changed. It's R4, wait, R, R10, yeah, R10T, okay, yeah, we got it. Thinking of refrigerant now. The second item here, R12T. This is the compressor, the suction thermistor, right? So we have the suction pipe thermistor and we have the compressor suction pipe thermistor. They gave us two thermistors. I love it. More thermistors, the better. Give us 20. I don't care. Same thing over here. It's the same sensor designation. It's R12T. And it's the same thing, compressor suction. Now they got, you know, they got tired of spelling things out, so they abbreviated compressor in VRV4. I'm okay with that. You guys are kind of lazy, but that's okay. Okay, I still love you. Let's scroll down here. 
So now we know the sensors are exactly the same, and you're like, okay, well, what is this guy getting on about? We're already five minutes in, and we haven't learned a damn thing. Here we go. We look at this, and we dive in, and we look at where these thermistors are located, and I even gave you circles and squares so you guys wouldn't get confused. Let's talk about the suction thermistor. Suction thermistor here, same thing, R10T. They gave it on the VRVX. I love that they put the designation on here, not just the number. That's really frustrating. They just do the number. That's on the suction line coming back to the accumulator. Okay, great. VRV4, same thing. It's on the suction line coming back to the accumulator. Here it is. They're in the same place. Okay, great. Love it. What about the compressor suction thermistor? Now, we look at VRV4. It's right here. So it's leaving accumulator on its way back to the compressor. Love it. That's exactly where we should be measuring suction superheat on VRV4. So right here, that's R12T. What about VRVX? And this is where they get you. They move the sensor six inches upstream of the compressor, which is really good. The only problem is, is you have this nice little beautiful line here of two things. You have hot gas bypass, and you also have the one that I have the biggest contention with, which is, it's a good or bad thing, is your discharge gas comes this way. Well, what happens when it goes to the refrigerant oil separator? Well, it separates the oil out of the refrigerant like it's supposed to. And so what happens, it comes back and it dumps back on the suction line. And so here's the issue of putting the thermistor on VRVX at the compressor suction pipe inlet. You are going to pick up heat from this line back to the compressor. So if you've been measuring suction superheat on VRVX series of equipment, and you've been measuring using this sensor here, R12T, like you have been with VRV4, you are doing it incorrectly. And the reason you're doing it incorrectly is because you are picking up heat from the natural process of oil returning back to the compressor, and that is going to throw your readings off. Why? Because when we are measuring the quality of vapor coming back through this accumulator and back over and across to our actual compressor, you have to remember the quality of vapor needs to be measured leaving the accumulator back over. And since we don't have that, we have to rely on two things. We either have to rely on their suction pipe thermistor and cooling, or you would have to then see, because you'd have to just, that's all you have, right? That's the only thing you can do. Even if we're in heating mode and you have suction gas coming back through here, it's going to be close enough to that sensor to hopefully pick it up. But again, you may have to just only rely on this one and know that some of these numbers are going to be skewed because of the heat being added back to that line. So here, we're trying to measure the quality of vapor suction superheat back to the compressor. And the only way to do that in cooling mode on a VRVX is here. I can't really measure that. If I'm doing in heating mode, I can't trust this one either, right? So I'm going to have to go off of these up here to measure suction superheat. So you either have this sensor here in cooling or you have these two sensors up here based upon the mode that your coil is in, your outdoor heat exchanger, for suction superheat. I cannot use this. However, I can use this if I'm measuring oil return. So if I know what my suction superheat is here and I see that this is warmer than that, the temperature rise is oil coming back to the compressor, which is a good thing. I can actually measure oil return on service checker. I love that. However, if you've never seen this layout between the two screens here and that there is a difference, you've probably been measuring suction superheat wrong. And you might find that every VRVX runs hot with high suction superheat and the numbers don't make sense. Well, they don't make sense because you're measuring it in the wrong place. Remember, cooling mode, suction temp, that's what we want to measure on both of these. In, in heating mode, you should go off of your coil temps, right? We want to see the change in state right after the coil right here. And VRV4, it lets us measure it here. But again, we don't have any measurement of oil return that's over here. Not a great thing. And so because of that, then you know, we get into this area where you know this is good and has its purpose. And this is good because it has its purpose. But understanding the difference between the two. So let's go even further because you know I'm going to drive this point all the way home. And let's go to the service checker data. Oh, yeah. She thought I wasn't going to show you any service checker data. Come on, guys. Do you know what channel you're watching here? All right. Service checker data. Both of these systems, one is a VRV4, one is a VRV4X. I'm just going to go ahead and point this out to you. And this is very confusing. This is a VRVX system. VRV4-US. This is a VRV4, just four. That's it. So this is an X series piece of equipment. This is a four series of equipment. Well, Roman, how do you know that? Well, because it's my job to know that. But let's look at the system. You'll notice here, suction pipe temp, compressor suction pipe temp. Okay. Over here, same thing. Suction pipe temp, compressor suction pipe temp. Okay. They're identical. You haven't convinced me that this is a different piece of machinery. So let's scroll up. 
And when we scroll up, you're going to notice here, one, the line item numbers don't match up. Let's look at that first. This is 77. This is 81. This is 79. This is 83. And I don't expect you to write that down, but let me just show you the one thing that we changed. One, VRV4 has two compressors, so you can easily check to see that I have two compressors pulling current. On, on VRVX, I should only have one compressor pulling current, and I do, and it's much larger. More amps, sure. But this is the one that's really going to get you because this is something new added to VRVX. It's the injection line for VRVX. You'll notice here there is no injection line uh, for, for VRV4. We go to line item 31, subcooling injection here. This just has receiver gas purge. Now, they both have receiver gas purge, but again, VRVX has extra stuff, right? The X stands for extra. This is an actual subcooling valve that's designed to inject vapor back into the actual compressor itself. It lets it build pressure on the, on the injection line for that unit, which allows vapor to push open the check valve and the actual compressor, which lets actually high pressure vapor enter the compressor in an intermediate stage of compression process. That's how vapor injection works. These two sets of data both say VRV4. That is not correct. The left one is X. The right one is VRV4. Now, again, the names are exactly the same on service checkers, so you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these two units by just looking at that suction temp and that compressor suction pipe temp. It would be your job to know, and watching this video, that VRV-4R, the R is the original, right? The VRV-4-US is VRV-X. Now, it gets even more complex because if I actually go into service checker and I look at the data sets, you'll see here that there are some that actually say VRVX right here. Those are actually heat pumps. And so they did change it when they did the VRVX heat pump. They did not change it for VRV heat recovery just because of how quickly it came out. And so because of that, and that's just an opinion, that's not a fact. I don't know the people who actually write this software. Um, no affiliation there. But again, one compressor two compressors. Those are things we can easily check. But also, it's your job to understand as a technician that if you're measuring suction superheat, that I can't actually measure it in the places that I once thought I could. And that's the, that's the purpose of this video, right? The purpose of this video is to say, hey, if I'm measuring suction superheat, what does it look like on my system? Because I told you to do that. But you're noticing here there's a problem. Notice on the right here, this is VRV4. Suction temp is 41 degrees. Compressor suction pipe is 35.6. VRVX, compressor suction pipe temp is 33, right? And the actual pipe at the compressor is 62. Where is that extra heat coming from? That is oil being added back to the suction line. Not just any type of oil. You know, we're talking about hot oil, warm oil from the actual compression process through the compressor, right? It picks up heat, that heat gets transferred into the oil, that oil goes into the actual suction line and raises the temperature. Again, can't take my suction superheat here, otherwise it's gonna be very high. Let's see if I did that right now. That's 40 degree suction superheat, when actually if I take my suction, sem suction sensor, 33.8, and I measure it based off my TE, I actually, my suction superheat is pretty good. So again, Go through your data sets, understand the difference between series of equipment. And that's just not just Daikin, right? I talk a lot about Daikin, LG, um, Samsung, Hitachi, all the way to Mitsubishi. It's our jobs as technicians to understand when a new piece of equipment comes out, what has changed. Now, I would love to say it's the manufacturer's job to educate us, but if we're all waiting for that to happen, uh, we're going to be really, really old and it probably just will never happen. And so love the company. Love the manufacturer, but again, there's this giant gap in information where when things like this happen, it never makes it to the field for the guys who are actually checking the problems. And that's the point here, right? The video point here is that, that these two equipments are different and the suction superheat is measured in different places. And you have to understand that to troubleshoot these pieces of equipment as, as, um, you know, well, basically. So... All right, that's 14 minutes of me ranting. Um, yes, you have been checking it wrong. I don't judge you. I still love you. Um, do better, though, and also start reading the service manuals. And if you have any questions, again, this one came from actually service technicians out of the field who said, hey, I don't understand the difference between these two things, and then here's why. Uh, so keep sending me those questions. Keep sending me those video ideas. I would love to make more videos like this to help educate you guys and understand how to check these things, why they matter, and where to check them because, again, this small jump in series, although they look the same, is a big assumption on your part if you think they are the same. So see you guys in the next one.